this unanticipated massive onslaught that is basically displaced people in seven local governments, seven out of 21. That's one third of the state is now on us being submerged and the inhabitants swept off. Farmlands, estimated at hundreds of billions, uh, submerged underwater. And we're not talking about houses and homes, properties and so on. Totally under the water, as it were. The, the damages are incalculable. Probably by the time we finish, we'll be talking maybe at least a trillion or thereabout. Damage roads, bridges. Now, so in fact, I was getting one early hours of this morning about, uh, you know, roads and bridges that have been cut off. <laughs> so that after the whole thing is over, I, I mean, when uh, the water level has more like stabilized, and hopefully in the next two weeks we'll begin to uh, recede. But after that is done, we will need tens of billions, tens of billions, just to bring back life to normalcy. It's not way beyond the capacity of the state to deal with. This was unplanned. This was somewhere you just sleep in and the morning around the tornado comes and, and takes you off. Um, unexpected. But what makes me a little bit um, surprised about um, is, is our unpreparedness in this country. Uh, because I understand Cameroon warns about this. And so we know that every two, three years this happens. Cameroon will open up the dam. And then it comes here and wipes off everything. <laughs> I mean, it's going to get to a point where the water will come and envelop the entire country. We've, and we've responded very uh, expeditiously, promptly and responsibly uh, within, like I said, within the ambit of our resources. Uh, we have people in camps, uh, several have been resettled to, of course, majority, you know, we have these communal um, relationships and people, their neighbors and friends and they evacuate and then they end up there. But there are thousands in camps where we have to provide them with water, with medical facilities, with uh, infrastructure for people to sleep, food, medicine and so on and so forth. Even we're putting solar power in uh, several of the camps now to guarantee them uh, access to power so you can even charge their phones and so on and so forth. The much we could, we've been responding our local government, we have a task force headed by my deputy governor and they're responding in all the local governments uh, simultaneously as it were. But that's within the limits of what we could and we've battled this for two weeks without the help from anywhere. And now I think I understand yesterday NEMA came uh, with some items and so on and I said yeah thank God there is something but two weeks <laughs> thousands of thousands of people would have died uh, but we know that this was going to happen and, uh, and and so on and so on but the country as a nation we are caught unprepared and my view is that number one it should be treated as a national emergency that it is a national emergency. The National Assembly needs to convene for this purpose. And if they have to have a supplementary budgetary appropriation of some hundreds of billions, if not if they stick, to send to these states, like yesterday, so that when these people return, how do they even start life afresh? How do they start with everything they have wiped off? In Anambra's case, hundreds of thousands of people, the entire livelihood, the entire thing they owned, wiped off. How do they start? They will need something from, from government. That's why government exists. Way beyond the capacity of the state government to deal with. The roads and bridges that have been wiped off. Some, you know, the water is a very powerful force. It's broken. And I have those on my phones because I get reports every hour. I get updates from all the local governments in terms of what is going on and we will strategize on the next line of action, what has to happen where this has to go, and so on and so forth. This is what we do, on, I mean, uh, on, on daily and annual basis. And so far, unfortunately, some people died when they were evacuating them with their own boats, not the one that we provided. Um, some of them resisted uh, leaving uh, when they were asked to leave, and when it became overwhelming, they were now using their own boats and so on. Because people have emotional attachment to the ancestral land. And so when we're asking them, leave, come out, come out, some of them were still, no, 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 it won't get here, it won't be too, until it became overwhelming, they decided to use their local uh, boats 
uh, to leave and unfortunately that accident that um, which tens of them um, uh, I mean um, their souls rest in peace and um, quite a devastating um, accident but we got to pick the pieces and um, for us as a state we are preparing even thinking about future ones even to build this even uh, camps IDP camps of the future and uh, see how we prepare the much that we could but this is way beyond the preparation of a state government it is something that the nation needs a national um, a national plan a national plan we can't be having this de devastation once every three years it's predictable Cameroon will open the dam we know it but what have we prepared as a response if they do we have, we have to do in the scenario analysis uh, what if they open it what will be the consequence and how are we prepared to deal with it not when it happens we say oh it happened no we knew it would happen you know it didn't come like one tornado uh, from the blues you know and it's happened every now and again this is different from the occasional rainy season thing you know some rivers overflowing we deal with this a yearly basis here in the state and some other states but this bit from Cameroon this locking of the dam why can't we build two three four such dams as break I mean uh, if you like circuit breakers as it were they break the speed which they come they come gradually and they empty into the Atlantic Ocean then coming like uh, this massive uh, thing with the destruction we can't afford it as a country you build bridges and roads and so on then one flood is out then you start afresh come on you know your excellency governor charles Saludo. thank you sir thank you very much thank you, thank you.